So Sony were kind enough to contact me one day, a couple of months ago now, and it was a call that I was never expecting, but oh boy. I was able to get my hands on the Sony FX6 for a few days, and wow, what a little cinematic beast. So when I got the call, I was absolutely shocked, but I was actually honored at the same time. Like never in my mind I thought, hey, well, you know, Sony of all companies would actually contact me. Like literally me, this crap. Come to think of it, I didn't actually know how they got my number, but it's somewhere, I don't know, probably my website or something. But I guess I should thank you guys for, um, for subscribing to my YouTube channel because without you guys, I wouldn't have a channel like this and I wouldn't have probably the opportunities to play with you know gear like this or cars like the Porsche. Um, thank you, thank you guys for subscribing and watching all my content, giving me the thumbs up, that's great. I really appreciate you guys watching my content. Uh, but anyway, having the Sony FX6 for only a few days, I decided to organize a car shoot and, you know, put this through, I guess, like a, a professional film set or, a, you know, commercials is a really good way to sort of show how the camera performs professionally in like a very high stress environment. And I was able to organize a commercial shoot with a Porsche Boxster 718. Now that is an incredible car. I had it for a few days. Man, that thing was, it's quick. I mean, it's not as quick as a Tesla, don't get me wrong, but uh, it's just fantastic. It's got such good class and character <sighs> compared to the, the Tesla, you know, it's, it was really good. Um, but yeah, anyway, quick shout out to Queensland Luxury Car Hire for the Porsche hookups. Anyway, uh, link will be in the description below if you do want to travel to Queensland and you want to hire, you know, a cool car to get around for a day or two, it's up to you. But I would like to mention, you know, this is not a full-on review, of obviously, because I only had the camera for a couple of days. This is only just like a first impressions of the camera, um, because I didn't get enough time to sort of dig real deep into the menu system and, you know, how this thing performs long term. Now, I've had actually a large experience with the Sony FS5, which is... Um, this is technically a replacement for the FS5, so I do feel like I have a really good head start in knowing pretty much the basics of this camera. And all honesty, the FX6 performed very, very well. Now let's talk business about the camera. So the Sony FX6 replaces the old FS5 series and sports a newer full frame sensor compared to the FS5 Super 35 sensor. Immediately, you know this is gonna be better in low light performance. You can see here, it says cinema line. So this is part of the cinema line, you know, for documentary filmmakers, even for content creators like us, you know, who do, um, you know, regular jobs for companies, advertisements, commercials, all those sort of things. So it's really good to actually play with this, but I do have to send it back. <sighs> Sad times. Now let's talk about some of the notable features that, you know, was different to the FS5. It has two XLR inputs on the handle rather than the body, which you know has separate audio dials with the micro adjustments on the opposite side of the body, which was actually very similar to the FS5 model. There is a handle on the right hand side where you can actually adapt this and it is actually a unique way of attaching it. It's kind of like the lens, how it sort of just clips in. It's really cool compared to the last version. All you need to do is just put it in, twist it, and it locks in quite nicely. And then you've just got a release button just like you would release your lens. It's a much smarter design than a previous model. Now, one of the coolest features that I like is the variable ND filter system, which you can actually make micro adjustments to make perfect exposure, especially if you do have the shutter at 180 degree uh, shutter angle, you can just slowly uh, adjust the variable ND to make sure it's perfectly exposed. Um, you know, ND filters make it super easy for when you're outside and there is actually a really cool function where it's auto ND. So it actually corrects the exposure for you without adjusting the shutter angle. So that is really, really handy. Now on the right hand side, there is also an SDI output, a TC input output, a LAN C remote connector, a USB multi connector and a DC input for your power supply. Now the monitor is on the left hand side, which is pretty standard, but it does come with this retractable monitor hood, which, you know, is a really nice touch. And it is also touchscreen as well. 
Now the button layout on the left hand side is different to the FS5 and FS7 series and it's even a little bit different to the uh, FX9 series as well. Now I did end up visiting my mate uh, Leighton that has the FX9 and I did want to actually see the comparison so I took it to his store just so I could see the comparisons between the FX9 and the FX6, see what the size is like and see what the image is like and pretty much the aesthetics, the complete aesthetics, you know. The reason why you would probably buy the FX6 is that it is a cinema camera in a very, very small body. Now the FX6 is placed technically between the A7S III and the FX9, and obviously the Sony Venice camera is, you know, the top of the range camera. But anyway, let's get on to the video specs. Now the FX6 is capable of recording external RAW through, I, I'm, I'm assuming it's the Ninja 5? Um, just like the A7S III. Um, XAVCI, which is DCI 4K as well, at 60 frames per second. And it does um, regular 38, 40 by 2160 as well at 60 frames per second, but it can also record in SAQ mode at 120 frames per second in 4K, which is really cool. Now all of these modes can record into the new CFX Express Type A cards, which you can also uh, record the UHS-2 V90 cards as well, which is great, except for 4K 120 in S and Q, you can't record with the V90 cards. Now mind you, the CF Express cards are much better data write speeds and transfer speeds too, but they are a little bit more expensive. I only just recently got one from what the A7S III because UHS-2 card that I was using, the Lexar one, the V90, it was just too slow, it kept corrupting. Uh, it's, I do not recommend the Lexar ones, I don't know, I'm just having a lot of issues with that particular card and it's really ruining my workflow, which is why I got the CFS Express Type A card. Now, uh, it does XAVCI at 1080 and it also allows you to record 240 frames per second in SNQ mode. Now in terms of autofocus, you can expect a very similar performance in the A7S III. Uh, with autofocus, it also does you know, eye autofocus and face tracking. It's incredibly accurate and is super useful when paired with great autofocus lens. Now we didn't have too many issues with focus in our commercial shoot and it performed really, really well. If you did actually want to place it into manual mode as well, it's just as easy as flicking the manual switch at the front uh, which is a really good position. It makes it so much more handy and accessible and just quicker for your workflow. Now, as you may know from the FS5 series is that white balancing is pretty much the same. It's got three different switches with the white balance um, and the button is on the front in the same position. You know, it's really great that you can actually quickly uh, switch into that as well and adjust that. Um, and the good thing about this one is it has the S Cinetone color science. Now you will see this at the top of the range cameras like the Sony Venice or even the FX9 as well. But fortunately the Sony A7S III doesn't have S Cinetone, even though it was speculated to have S Cinetone, it doesn't. Uh, but you know, it is such a popular color scheme and I think it looks really, really good, especially when you actually do shoot an S log and color grade it. Oh, it looks fantastic. But anyway, my initial thoughts on this are pretty much all positive. Like I can't really think of anything negative about this camera at this point in time. I mean, until I get my hands back on it. Uh, we had a really fun time in this shoot. And you know, once you get around your head around everything and where everything is, it's just like any other camera. You know, you need to know how to use it and how to control it optimally. And it does take you time. You're not just gonna pick it up and be like, hey, I'm a, you know amazing cinematographer. You need to learn where all the custom buttons are. You need to customize it yourself and put it all in different positions and really know how to shoot with this camera. But yeah, I really enjoyed using it. It was amazing to use. It fits really well in the Sony ecosystem and it is perfect run and gun because of the size. It's so, so crazy light. We actually place it onto the Xeon uh, Crane 3S and yeah, obviously that thing can handle tons, but uh, it was fantastic. It performed so well on the gimbal. It is really, really cool. Um, but you know, that's pretty much all I have to say about this camera. I was just, I'm so excited that I had the chance to use this and uh, to the best of my ability with the amount of time that I had because you know, I was juggling the Porsche as well. I really wanted to spend as much time in the Porsche as I could. Uh, but I did do a lot of filming, sunrise, sunset, night shoots as well. 
Um, got a few other videos coming on that as well. So that's gonna be really exciting. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can get a little bit more notifications uh, for my next videos. <sighs> yeah, I'm gonna play um, some B-roll clips. If you wanna you know, have a look at the image quality on this, pixel peep, zoom in, do whatever you want. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that thumbs up. That would be absolutely amazing. My name's Jason, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Let's get it. Thank you.